Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, we're here in the first part of the three salvation study, the plan of salvation for lost sinners. Salvation for lost sinners. Remember what we talked about in the intro. Salvation in any given, dispens any given dispensation has always been God saving man by His grace. Let's go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. That's where we're going to start today. God saving man by His grace. And you hath He quickened who were dead in trespasses in and sin. Stop right there. Now, understand exactly what that means. You take that and read it backwards a little bit. Your sins, when you sin, you trespass against God and it makes you worthy of hell. We're going to find out that death and destruction oftentimes refer to hell. When we're dead, before we're saved, before you and I got saved, we were dead, which meant that we were heading for hell. And we were quickened. Well, it's not in this one. Yeah, it is right there. You had to be quickened, made alive. We were dead in trespasses and sin. We sin, we've trespassed against God, and the cost of that is we're going to go to hell, death. When you get saved, you're made alive. You're no longer dead and on your way to hell. Verse number two, wherein in times past, it's a little windy, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And the reason I kind of emphasized course of this world is part two of this study is going to be on repentance. You can have godly sorrow or worldly sorrow. Okay. It's the course of this world. If you choose the world, you're going to hell. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were children of wrath. What's that talking about? God's wrath was on us. We got saved. What is God's wrath going to do for the lost people, the lost world? Well, there's his physical wrath, like in the time of Jacob's trouble. You go in the Old Testament, you can see his physical wrath being done. But here, I believe, it's his wrath when he's going to send people to hell. Okay? And we're by nature the children of wrath. Okay? When did sin enter the world? Adam and Eve. Okay. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sin, there's the word dead again, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Quickened together, made alive, with Christ. Okay. Jumping ahead, I'm trying to stick focused on what is God saving us from? Hell. Because of our sins, we're going to hell. And God's trying to save us from that. But um, right there, it says, together with Christ. Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. That he was made alive. We are now made alive when we are born again. Mm -hmm. The old man is dead. New man is risen with Jesus Christ. Verse 6, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace. Remember what I said earlier? If I have said it, um, His grace. God's, yeah, did. God's always saving man. Salvation has always been God saving man by His grace. Exceeding riches in exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. Verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And I always throw this in there. It does not say, for by uh, faith... Yeah, right there. I was, okay, I was going to say it right. For by faith are ye saved through grace. It doesn't say that. It says, by grace are you saved through faith. Okay? As we go along these studies, you're going to find out it takes faith 
Honestly, it takes faith to believe in hell. You can't see it. You're not hoping for it, <laughs> but you can't see it. Uh, it takes faith to repent. It takes faith to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And it takes faith to pray to a God that you cannot see. You believe He's there, you believe He's listening to you, and you pray to Him, you confess both your repentance and faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Those first two things happen in the heart. They don't happen out loud, they happen in the heart. The second one, confessing both in prayer, is you praying to the Lord. That's when you start your relationship with the Lord and you start prayer. And then you ask God to save you. So people like to switch that around. It's grace alone. I don't know why these people can't say grace alone. It's always faith alone or free grace. Um, free grace people, it's only, you know, you just believe. That's it. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. So when they switch it around, I left that part out. When they switch that around, they're turning faith into works. It's no longer God's grace that saved you. It's your faith that saved you. It's something you are doing. You're, ha you're supposed to have faith, it says, through faith. Okay? We're going to get into it in a second about what it means by through faith. Okay? Uh, verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Change life. But real quick, when it says, through grace... Uh, we talked about it. God's the one that does the saving through His grace. It's a gift. They take the gift away when they try to say it's faith alone. And the reason that's wrong, it says through faith. Okay? I've told this story before. Um, car dealership. You have a car dealership. Some guy, some person, goes down there and says, Okay, I'm going to buy a car and you can give it away. So he pays the full price for that car. Today it's like 30 grand. Let's say it's one of those trucks, a nice truck. That's 60 grand. Okay? He buys a vehicle brand new and tells him you can give it away. You can give it away. It's free. Tell the person it's a gift. Just giving it away. So they call you up and say, "Hey, somebody came by. They paid for this vehicle outright." It's brand new, and they told us to give it away. It's a gift, tell you it's a gift, and your name came up. So we're going to give you this free car, this free truck, this free vehicle. Now the person at the other end of the line, okay, how's their reaction? Their reaction's like, I'd be like, yeah, it's a free truck. You know, it's a free car. I didn't have to pay for it. I didn't do anything to earn it. It's free. It's a gift. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Run out into the front yard in the driveway. Look around. Where is it? Where? Hey, is this a prank? I don't see it. The guy on the other end's like, okay, it's not a prank, but here's the directions to the car lot. Here's the directions. And the person there is like, and this is for the faith alone people and the free grace. The person sitting there, he's like, or she's like, wait a second. That's works. If I have to drive to the car dealership or hitch a ride or take the bus, then it's works. It's no longer free. I earned it. No. And here's another key thing. He gives directions. Here's the directions to where the car lot is. You have to follow these directions specifically. Okay? If you don't follow these directions specifically, you're going to get lost. You're not going to find the car dealership. That's what it's talking about when it says through grace. Two parts of this study that's mainly important, and I might go off a little bit here, in that direction, a little bit there. I'm going to try to stay on focus. It's God's grace that saves. God does the saving, and what is He saving you from? Hell. Sin. Because you've sinned against God, the cost of sin is you're going to hell. So, yeah, and these free... And these free grace, this is another thing about being hypocrites. These free grace, free grace, faith alone, nut jobs would have no problem going down and getting their free car and still calling it a gift. Saying it's free. It's a gift. They didn't earn it. They had to drive down to get it. They had to follow instructions on how to find the place. To find the car. Okay. But it's no longer free. It's not a free gift. 
But they refused to come to Jesus broken and ask him to save them. They refused to repent. They refuse, even nowadays, a lot of times they take repentance out, but they'll keep the faith alone, it's belief in Jesus Christ. And of course, say this little prayer. Say this little prayer. Repeat after me. But nowadays, they're even taking prayer out of it. They're changing the directions, the instructions for the plan of salvation on how to find God's grace. They don't want people getting saved. Okay, they don't want God saving people. These are servants of Satan that are creating false converts. Sorry about that. What is God saving us from? Hell. Cost of sin is eternity in hell. Romans 6.23. You want to turn there in your King James Bible. God's perfect written word in English. Don't use Catholic Bibles from the Vatican. Notice it says death singular. Okay. Notice you look at the gift of God, that's also singular. And we always talk about death. What does death mean? Hell. Okay, I believe it means that you're on your way to hell. The wages of sin is death. The day that you are born, you're born into a world of sin. And when you get to the age of accountability, and you can come to the Lord and broken and say, I'm a sinner, I'm no good, I'm on my way to hell, sorry Lord for sinning against you, at that point on, you're heading for hell. Not because you did that. I'm talking about before you do that, when you get to the age of accountability, you sin, uh, and you don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ, you're on your way to hell. Now, the reason I said it's singular is we're going to find out real quick. Uh, turn to Matthew 7.13, why I pointed out that they're both singular. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Okay, what does it say there? For wide is the gate, singular, and broad is the way, singular, that leadeth to destruction, singular. And notice destruction. Death and destruction. I believe it's talking about hell. And many there be which find it. A lot of people get the many part, and they'll say, well, there's many paths to hell, but one path to heaven. Uh, no, there's one path to hell. Uh, for the wages of sin is death singular. Okay. Let's keep reading. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. There's one path to hell, and there's one path to heaven. Okay. There's no in-between. There is no, I don't believe in hell, so therefore I, 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 I'm not going to hell. No, there's hell, and there's heaven. There's Jesus, there's Satan, okay? There's God's way or the world's way. Uh, godly sorrow versus worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow leads to self-righteousness. And also it says here, few there be that find it. It goes back to that car story I did. I did a video once because I was on the computer and I was goofing around with the graphs and everything and like art and I decided you know what let me do an actual outline of the three different plans of salvation that's out there not the one we're doing for this study I'm talking about for lost sinners you have the true gospel the true plan of salvation repentance towards God faith in our Lord Jesus Christ confess both in prayer and then ask God to save you call upon the name of the Lord okay you ask God to save you that is the proper and only path to heaven, going through Jesus Christ. Well, then there's the workspace. Then there's the free grace. And those are the three that I use. And I showed, like, a car going from one box to the next, and I showed lines. You have to follow directions. And I showed where this is the real path that we'll be talking throughout all these studies. And I showed the other two, and I showed the lines. If they skipped, so much as skipped one, like they skip repentance, they don't make it to the box. They don't make it to God's sal the salvation, the plan of salvation, God's grace. They don't find it. They take repentance out. They get lost. If it's belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, and they have, and they take repentance out, and now they're taking prayer out, the workspace say it's not the belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. You have to do good works. Okay? And all these paths do not lead. Why? Because very few that find it. And as we learn in the next study that will be coming up, 
the number one reason why few people find it is worldly sorrow. Okay? Self-righteousness. They don't want to follow the instructions. They want to take out what they want to take out and live how they want to live and do things the world's way. So, we learn from there that you have to find it, the proper gate. You have to find God's grace. Revelation 21.8. Let's turn to Revelation 21.8. I found this word, and God started showing me, do you really understand what that word means? It's almost like it's got a double meaning. Okay? Or no, it's got the same meaning, but it's talking about two different things. Let's get into it. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, there's the word, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay. Notice it said the abominable. All these things make you worthy of hell. And there it talks about the second death, where hell, where we learn that hell was that death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. Okay. Everybody, all the lost people who rejected Jesus Christ, those who died in their sins, go to hell. Now turn to Psalms 14:1. Here I need you to hold this verse, and we're going to look at another verse. So, Psalms 14.1, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they have done abominable works, there is none that doeth good. Okay, There's the word abominable, but notice it says, done abominable works. It's action. Why? Because the lost world is going to be judged by their works for salvation at the great white throne. God, Jesus is going to be standing there, and they're going to have to be paying for their sins. Okay, They're going to be judged by their works. Now, we as Christians, at the judgment seat of Christ, we will be judged by our life as a Christian. Our deeds, our works as a Christian. But we're not going to go to hell. The lost world is. That's why I believe it says, done abominable works. Abominable, I believe there, when it's in contrast with works, it's talking about people who reject God. They don't believe in God. They don't want anything to do with God. They don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. There is no God. Okay? They try to be their own gods. Now, keep your hand there and go to Titus 1.16 if you can. Remember, I tried this before. It just takes me forever to turn from. Sometimes the wind gets here. I'm on the hillside. It's a beautiful day. I'm trying to be outside while we still can before summer's over. So, Titus 1.16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate. Notice it says, being abominable. You go back to Psalms 14.1, what did it say? They've done abominable works. Here it says, being abominable. It's not about doing abominable works. They're abominable in God's sight, period. What is this talking about? Okay. This is talking about, I believe, false converts. I was once abominable in the sight of God. I was a false convert most of my life. And when God brought the truth to me, the true gospel, the true perfect written word of God, I was like, He got me, I started looking into it, and I came to God broken. Okay? But I was abominable at one time. And there's a lot of you out there that have the same testimony of you know, your false converts, whether you're Catholic, Mormon, a Jehovah's Witness, uh, whatever, uh, eh, uh, gosh, uh, I want to say Protestant, Methodist, uh, Angelican, non-denominational, I came from the non-denominational junk. Um, God still saved you, and God still saved me. Can He still save you? Absolutely. Second Thessalonians 1.8 Turn to 2 Thessalonians 1.8. Right. And, uh, and the reason we're turning to this passage is because in Titus 1.16 it said, and disobedient. What's it talking about, and disobedient? Okay. Abominable, I believe, is talking about false converts. They're going their own path, their own direction. They don't want God to save them. They don't want to go to hell, but they're going their own direction trying to get to heaven their way. 
2 Thessalonians 1.8 In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, atheists, and that, and that obey not the gospel, they call, we're starting to call them religious atheists. Brother Brian came out with a study that just was amazing about religious atheists. Okay? And that was based off Titus 1.16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. And we read about, you know, and it full of said in his heart, there is no God. In works they deny God. Uh, obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The disobedience there is they're trying to make it to heaven their way. They're not going through the plan of salvation. They're not going through Jesus Christ. I've always taught this. You skip repentance because we're going to go through each section and go through it really good. You skip repentance, you, your belief is just in your head, it's not in your heart. And God looks at the heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why you confess both in prayer and you call upon the name of the Lord to save you. But if you don't obey the gospel, if flaming fire taking vengeance on them, it kind of sounds like hell, doesn't it? 1 Peter 4.17 You want to turn there? For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Okay. And if first, uh, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? There's obey not the gospel again. People want to go their own direction. Okay. They either want nothing to do with the proper path that leads to heaven, and they're on the way to hell, and they want nothing to do with God. So now, all these false religions that I mentioned, and much, many more, but I'm talking mainly the religions, not Buddhists or something like that, they don't claim God, okay, Jesus Christ. They don't claim they're going to. I'm talking about those that call themselves a Christian and are not. They are abominable in the sight of God. Now, remember, at the point of these videos, I'm hitting hard to people that are professing Christians to get you, that if you're still part of this faith alone crowd, or you're part of works, or you're a Catholic, or you're a Jehovah's Witness and you come across this, or you're a Mormon, whatever, I'm trying to get you to stop and go, wait a minute, in this part of the study, hell's a real place and it's a serious place. I better make sure I'm not going to hell. The Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay? You need to make sure you're on the right path. Not working your way. I'm saying that, you may, you're, that you're truly saved. The Bible says you're sealed into the day of redemption. Okay? That's why this is so important. And the other reason it's so important with, with recent experiences uh, a lot of people get on to me and say, not a lot, uh, but there's been a few, and I know there's going to be more and more people that get on to me as I stay back in ministry, I'm getting back into the ministry, that why don't you preach more on the gospel? Why aren't you preaching the gospel more? Well, we're supposed to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Okay? We're supposed to do that just as much as we're supposed to preach the gospel. And here's the thing for this study. If you don't know for sure you are saved, what are you doing preaching the gospel in the first place? I mean, think about it and let that hit home. If you don't have assurance of salvation, if you don't know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die, what are you doing out there trying to preach some false gospel and so other people cannot be sure? I don't know. It might work. It might not. You shouldn't be out there preaching the gospel to begin with. You need to check to see if you're saved. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that doubting your salvation and getting it worked out to where you get to a point in life, not self-righteousness, come across self-righteous people, I don't care what you say. I'm sticking to my way. I don't care what you say. I'm talking about becoming broken. Coming to the Lord saying, Oh Lord, did I repent? Was my repentance genuine? Did, was it, did, was it in the heart? Or was it me? Like I said, the next study, it's like all this kind of folds together and I'll be quoting some of the same verses here in some of the other studies. But did I just say I'm a sinner and, and that's it? Or did I truly have sorrow in my heart for sinning against you? Was my belief in my head or was it in my heart? Okay. 
You need to get that figured out. And of course, if you are abominable, I was, and I was preaching a false gospel. You have no business preaching a, a gospel, period. Okay, because your gospels are false. I think I lost my pace. Yeah, you're making false converts. And I like to point out Matthew 15, 14. Let them alone, they be blind, leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Luke 6, 39, and he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into a ditch? You have someone who's abominable, a professing Christian, who's on their way to hell. But when they go to preach their gospel, what are they doing? Leading that person to hell. Okay, people who are abominable have no place preaching the go their gospel, their false gospel. Okay, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, if you want to turn to 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I did that one for two purposes. God is the one that does the saving. I'm going to keep hammering that nail in until people get that down. These faith alone crowd, these works-based salvation. God is the one that does the saving through Jesus Christ. By His grace, through Jesus Christ. I also read this second fold when we read where it is, in Revelation uh, 21 8, and then you read 1 Corinthians 6 9, and you can even go to Ephesians chapter 5, I think it is, about the changed life, and go through there and say, hey, it's for evaluating your life when you do communion, saying, hey, am I right in this area with the Lord? Am I right in all these areas with the Lord? But I said that because you read both of them, uh, we all fall under, under that list, okay? Not one of us can escape and say, oh, no, I never did that, I never did that, I never did that, I never did that, I'm perfect. See, I'm good to go. No one can say that. I fall under a lot of these when I was lost, and I still struggle with some of these things, even as a saved, uh, lying. You know, if you so much as said one little lie, well, I didn't want to hurt their feelings. Yeah, but did you still lie? Well, yeah, you sinned. Now you're worthy of hell. Okay. Everyone is worthy of death. Atheists, religious atheists, even saved sinners. No, we said worthy. Not that you're going to go to hell, but worthy of hell. Atheists are going to go to hell if you die in your sins and reject Jesus Christ. Religious atheists, you're going to go to hell. These are the false converts who want to go to heaven and they're going their own way. They make up their own plan of salvation. They ignore the true plan of salvation. And you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and me, we understand that we're still worthy of hell, and it's only by God's grace and, the, and His Son, Jesus Christ, God manifests in the flesh, it's only because of His death on the cross that I'm able to go to heaven. But, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? But I thank the Lord, Jesus Christ. Uh, that's a verse I'll be using in one of the other studies. But, um, there's none... There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They've all gone out of the way. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. You're still a sinner after salvation. The difference is, you have the Holy Spirit to help you fight sin, to change life. And you're not going to hell. Okay? But everybody, everyone, is worthy of death. Hell. When you get someone who's a professing Christian saying how good they are now and acting like they have earned salvation with their faith, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned, okay, and come short of the glory of God. But we are still sinners today. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We're all sinners. We all are worthy of death. That's why it's important for you to go through and say, hey, did I do things properly? Was I misled? Did someone lie to me? I was so mad. I was so mad when I got saved. 
Why? Because I found out most of my life these people in these Babel buildings and these non-denominational buildings and whatnot, they lied to me. They passed on lies, deceiving and being deceived. They were passing on deception and they were being deceived themselves. Okay? I was mad I was never told the truth. I was mad that nobody in, see, gosh, i got to remember, I'm old now. <laughs> 40 years old, 5 years, around 34, 35 is when God saved me. And for, I want to say 20 years, let's say 15 years, 15 years of being a false Christian, nobody told me the Bible version issue. Nobody told me about the King James Bible. In fact, they threw the new King James in my face. And then, and after that, it only a short amount of time before they got me away from the New King James, which is still bad. I think the New King James is worse than any other Bible out of there because it's a transition book to get you away from the Word of God. And they got me to an NIV. Okay. And then, a <laughs> message Bible. I mean, just nonsense. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about some more verses on hell. The whole point of this is to really drive it home, these two things. Sin is death. You're on your way to hell. And it's God's grace that saves you. Who does the saving? God. What's He saving you from? Hell. What's sending you to hell? Your sin. God's sending you to hell because of your sin. Say it that way. Matthew 13, 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore, drew to shore, and sat down, and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. Talking about the second death. Okay, the end of the world. We talked about the second death when we read Revelation. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell is a real place. Okay? Eternal burning. Think of a third degree burn. If you've ever talked to anybody with a third degree burn, I was in the military, and I was uh, fuels, um, P.O.L., petroleum, oil, and lubricants. Um, I was in fuels. We used to refuel a lot of the airlines, uh, airlines, a lot of the planes that came through, the B-52 bombers when I was stationed in Miami, North Dakota, but they also had a little platform um, that had helicopters. And we'd pull up in our trucks, they'd pull out the hose, connect it to the helicopter, we'd refuel them, and we'd go back. Well, I came across one of the guys there, uh, and he was really burnt. And you ask him about it, he couldn't go through it again. It hurt really bad. He was blessed. I say blessed, but looking back, I guess not so much. I'm not for the military. It's being used by the Vatican. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just saying they're not being used to defend America that much anymore. But he was allowed to stay in the military. But the point is, you find somebody who's got second to third degree burns, first degree burns. I don't know if people... I'm trying to remember which direction the level is. And, but you talk to somebody on what it felt like. They wouldn't ever want, A, they would never want to go through it again, and B, they wouldn't wish it upon anybody. It's very important. Hell is real, and it's eternal. So are those who go to hell. Okay. Revelation 20, 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, what we're talking about. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Uh, you want to make sure your name is in that book of life. Um, 2 Thessalonians 1 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. I just wanted to add that part because we already read this one before, but and to you who are troubled, rest with us. One of the parts of my studies is going to be. God's saving us from this world, this wicked world. Okay, rest with us. Get saved. Be with us. And don't let the lost world get to you. Okay, God will deal with them. And that's where you go into verse 8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of our Lord and from the glory of His power. You know one of the things about me? I'm not a car salesman. 
I'll preach the gospel to people. I'll hand out gospel tracts. But I'm not a car salesman, okay? They reject Jesus Christ, okay? Don't be troubled. Rest with us. Brush your feet off. Move on to the next city, okay? We're telling you this out of love. You don't want to go to hell. You don't want to. Psalms 145.20 The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. There's that word destroy. Now, okay, you can think earthly things where he's destroying people in the Old Testament, but we learned about destruction also being a way of saying you're going to hell. God's going to destroy you. It's him sending you to hell. You're dead in trespasses and sin. Okay. Revelation 14.11 and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Torment ascendeth up forever and ever. It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. But once again, the point I'm out, pointing out is torment ascendeth up forever and ever. What is God saving you from? Hell. Hell is a real place. You don't want to go to hell. All right. Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye accursed, into everlasting fire. Ever lasting fire. People like to say that you get, sometimes the words leave me, basically you get burnt up like that. You go to hell, annihilation. You go to hell, and boom. You're, you take your punishment, it lasts a couple seconds, you're burnt. Let's say it lasts ten minutes, you get burned up, you're gone. Well then why is the fire everlasting? If hell's done and it's served its purpose, why is it everlasting? And we learned up there that you're going to be punished Forever. Okay? It is everlasting. And here's the part that's also important. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay? Hell was not created for man. It was created for Satan and the fallen angels. Demons is another word. Okay? Now I'm going to keep reading for a little bit. But that's the main thing. Everlasting fire and hell's not created for man. Okay? It's created for Satan, the devil, and his angels. That's why I said there's two paths, because the Bible says it, heaven, hell. You can spend eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our King, our friend, our Master. I can go through all these different things. Um, I'll be doing a study on that. Our relationships to God, different relationships to God. Personal relationship. People attack the fact that personal is not in the Bible. Okay. Or you can spend an eternity in hell with Satan. Those are your two options. There is no in between. Okay? God does the saving. What's he trying to save mankind from? His creation. Hell. He's trying to save us from hell. And those of us who are truly saved, he saved us from hell. Those who refuse to follow the proper plan of salvation, you need to. You need to repent. If you're lost and watching this, a false convert, and we get through all these studies, I'm hoping any time during these studies, you come to the realization that I was lied to. I was told it's faith alone. I told, you don't have to repent. You don't even have to say a prayer. It's just you believe in your head and you're saved. I was lied to. Come to the Lord broken. Okay? The reason I want to keep reading, let's see, 42, For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, or thirst, or strangers, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as he did, not, did it not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me. And these shall go away into 
everlasting punishment. I jumped the gun up there. I thought we already came through this verse, but everlasting punishment. Everlasting fire. You're going to spend eternity in hell. You're not going to bull up, uh, burn up and be annihilated like that, and then I'll, then you're not to worry about anything. You'll be gone. No, you're going to be burning in hell forever. Everlasting punishment. But the righteous into life eternal. Okay, the righteous it's talking about there, when you get into the gospel, the Pauline epistles, after the death of Jesus Christ, is a, um, you find out the righteousness is Jesus' righteousness is imputed to you. Okay, it's not saying that you have to be perfect, sinlessly perfect. Okay, why am I hitting hell hard? Because that is what's on the line. They say it's what's at stake here. Okay, you can spend eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ our Lord, or eternity in hell. Everybody has a soul that is eternal. God created it. Your soul is going to last forever. It can either be destroyed over and over again through, throughout eternity in hell, or you can go to heaven. Remember the verse we read about seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now? Uh, it's talking about your soul. It's in two places. My soul's here, and I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus now. Okay, why do I keep saying God saves? Okay, because I'm trying to drive it home. The whole point of this study was a quick look on hell. It's real. It's dangerous. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. Okay, but I keep hammering on God saves. God saves. God's the one that does the saving. You can't do anything to earn salvation. You can't do any. Your faith isn't going to save you. Okay, I've always pointed this because people say, well, your repentance saved you. And, and your prayer, the people who take prayer out, your prayer can't save you. No, you, you're right. Repentance doesn't save you. Faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ doesn't save you. Confessing both in prayer doesn't save you. Asking God to save you. Call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. God's the one that does the saving. You want to be saved, follow the plan of salvation and ask God to save you. He will look at the heart. Okay. You cannot save yourself. Okay, we showed the cost of sin. We showed who does the saving and what he's saving you from. God, through his, Jesus Christ, is saving you from hell because of your sin. Cost of sin, wage of sin is death. Cost of sin is hell. Okay. I'm going to leave you with this last verse but before we move on to part two of salvation for a lost sinner. Okay. Luke 12.5. If you want to turn to Luke 12.5. But I will forewarn you all. Forewarn you. Wait, stop. Go ahead and turn to Luke 12.5, but I forgot to mention something. Uh, that's why I have this here. Right. We didn't go over hell hard, hard, hardcore. Okay? I just want to mention, I was going to leave this as part of the study with repentance, because you have to understand what's at stake, and that's what breaks you the way the world is and how wicked it is and how wicked you are being a part of it and it leads to repentance you gotta know what's at stake and I was gonna do them together but by the time I finish the notes I'm like this will probably be like a two hour study so I'm trying to break them down as best I can so they're not super long so if you really want to hit on hell I went ahead and bought this uh, Peter Ruckman five surprises in hell you can listen to the audio online on YouTube but I went ahead and bought it because I want to make sure that nothing was cut out, nothing was left out. And I really like this study. It's a really, really good one. Uh, Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries, I'll link his playlist about his, all his studies on hell that God has shown him. And my favorite one, because people don't seem to get this, is Satan doesn't run hell, God does. That's one of his studies that I love. It's really good. Another study to look into is, I uh, can't remember the name of it, but it has to do with how hell is forever. It's not annihilation, okay? It doesn't, uh, so you're going to burn forever, okay? So now if you turn to Luke 12, 5, let's get to that. Last verse, but I want to leave you with this. But I will forewarn you, this whole study is, I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Not the world, Him. Okay? You're not to have worldly sorrow, you're to have godly sorrow. And that leads us into part two of salvation for a lost sinner.
repentance. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.